that day is the ultimate reality. That there is no greater reality than that day. If you want to understand the reality, and, and by the way, Al-Haq, so beautiful, it means reality, min, min al-haqiqah, right? Haq also means uh, right, as in, I have a right over you, you have a right over me. That is the day when what is rightfully due to Allah will be taken. What you deserve will be given. The day of giving rights and taking rights is part of the meaning of Al-Haq. That day is the ultimate day of rights. Then Al-Haq also means purpose. That day is the ultimate purpose, meaning that day is the ultimate purpose for which you were in this world. Your everything you did amounts to something on that day. I'm reminded of the unfair education system in, the, in my country of origin, Pakistan, where students study the entire year for their metric exam, and that one exam determines whether or not they're a failure or their entire year's labor is one piece of paper. One test, that's it, right? And that's an unfair system because it doesn't take into account all the homework, all the study, all the effort, nothing. It's just that one test, that's it. Quran and Judgment Day is not like that. It takes into account everything, but everything will be graded on that one day. That day is not a day you're being tested. That's the day you're being graded. Right? That's the day you're, everything you and I did is being evaluated. Now on the valuation of our deeds, al-haq, I should mention, part of al-haq, the reality of things, the true measure of things. So everybody here prayed. We just prayed all together. But are our prayers going to count the same in front of Allah? No. Some people who prayed here today, maybe this is the prayer that earned them their forgiveness and their ticket into Jannah. Some people who prayed here today, it may be, may Allah make it, none of us. May be worth dust. Nothing. Their mind wasn't in their prayer, their intention wasn't in the prayer. I'm just here because my mom made me come. Because she keeps making me listen to the Ali Khan videos. I'm stuck here right now. And I'm snapping about it because I'm stuck. But their prayer is worth nothing to Allah. Mom's happy they prayed. Allah isn't. Because they didn't pray for Allah. You know? No. The reality of what we do, the good that we do and the bad that we do, anything that we do, there's, a, there's an obvious, you could see it, and there's a truth behind it. The true value of it will come out on that day. Hajj, Umrah, memorization of Qur'an, being a scholar, being a speaker, being an imam, being a leader, being a student, being someone who recites Qur'an beautifully, being somebody who specialized in hadith, being somebody who traveled to learn, being somebody who gave charity. You can be all of those things, but that can, all of those things can also be on the outside. And there's something else going on on the inside. That day, the truth about who you, who you really are and who I really am comes out. On the flip side of it, there are people who have no knowledge. They don't know any Arabic, they don't know how to recite Qur'an, they don't even have a beard, astaghfirullah al-azim. You know, she doesn't even wear hijab. But they were seeking about Allah, and they, whatever little they knew they were, they were working on. They were even praying in English, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله, even worse, Spanish, you know. And they died like that. And they're possibly worth more to Allah on Judgment Day than a great Qari of the Qur'an. Then somebody who knew way more than them, somebody who used to give lectures and talks and had YouTube videos, and they're worth way more to Allah, because their sincerity and the, the genuineness of their heart, Allah values it. We don't see it. We don't see anything. Allah sees it. Allah sees their struggle. You know? There's a sister I met one time, I was flying in one of the airlines, I don't want to mention she'll get embarrassed, she was a flight attendant, and she recognized me. And flight attendants dress a certain way, their code or whatever. And she came to me and she said, she makes, I make istighfar every night. I look, for, I look for a job for three years. My parents are sick. My dad needs medical attention. The only reason I'm doing this job is to pay for his medical bills. And I don't know what else to do. But I cry every single night. As soon as this job is done, I dress the way I'm supposed to dress. I, I actually put the hijab on and they told me they'll fire me if I keep it on. Obviously not an American Airlines. Right? It was, an, it was an airline from the Muslim world. We should be proud. Right? They wouldn't get fired here, but they'd get fired over there for dressing like a Muslim. So that just makes me super happy. I don't give them business anymore. But, um, 
and she says, you know, I, I know I'm a sinner. I was like, there are people, there are people who are in so much comfort and they go into haram and they celebrate it. And this woman's in a corner, like she's cornered and she's trying to take care of her parents. And she's violating some rules of the deen, yes. I'm not, I'm not saying she's doing something right. But she's making istighfar, making tawbah, crying before Allah every night. Allah will value those people. Sometimes people are in tough situations. You can't just be, no, no, you need to quit your job and let your dad, Allah will take care of him. And the surgery will be performed by angels and hold on a second. Keep looking for another job, Allah will make a way. You know, Allah will make a way. Just give people hope. Give people hope.